The ability to auto-detect hardware configurations, code, and even tag databases can be a huge benefit for any engineer. Let me show you how easy they can be. As you can see here, I have an S7 1500 controller and have a maximum rack of 32 modules. So let's say, for instance, I want to do some maintenance, but I don't have the project, so what do I do? First step is I come over to the version 12 software, click on Create New Project, accept the default name, and click on Create. So what the software is going to do for us is actually create a project container that we can actually go back and add the hardware configuration to it. Once it's finished, I have a couple of choices here in the middle. I can click on Configure Device, Add New Device, Give Focus to Controllers, choose 1500 CPU, go to the bottom, choose Unspecified CPU, click on Add. So basically what we're doing is adding the unspecified CPU and adding that to the actual project container. That way we can go out and auto-detect and find all this hardware and bring it back into the project. Once it's done, I have the option of clicking on a detect button here. Once I have, at this point, I'm going to go out and search and try to find IP addresses and device names of 1500 CPUs. He has found one. And on the left side of this dialog box, we have the ability to click on flash LEDs. If I come over here, you can see that we are flashing the LEDs in this particular rack. So this is the correct choice. I can uncheck that and now click on detect again. So now what he's going to do is find the exact part number of the CPU and every single module in this actual rack and bring that back into the project. And the beautiful thing is we don't have to open up the hardware catalog and pick and choose all the piece parts of this maximum rack. Now that I physically have the rack, that means my hard configuration is done. So how about the software? What I need to do is go back and give focus to the actual CPU, click go online. What he'll actually do is go out and populate another pop-up box. He's searching for it right now. Once he physically finds that IP address and device name this time, I can click Go Online. And the way I'll know I'm online is I'll have these orange bars across the top of the software here. And then once he's actually found each individual module and the status of each one, he's going to start to populate with little check boxes all the way across the entire hardware configuration. And also at the exact same time, the code and the PLC tags. If I actually give focus to the program blocks, you'll see that I have a couple of blocks missing here, and then there's something wrong with the tags as well. Well, if I continue to have focus on the CPU, I have an addition up here in the top, an upload button. So I can actually click on this at this point. Another dialog box pulls up and asks me if I want to continue. I say yes. Click on upload from device. So now what he's going to do is go grab everything from a program standpoint and bring that back into the project into the offline mode. Once it has, you'll notice here in this tree structure, everything will go green. That means we have everything from the actual CPU. What I want to do now is go click Go Offline. Once it has, the orange bars go away. And now you can see that if I come down the PLC tags, I can open them up, show all tags. Now you can see I have all 100 or 200 tags that came in this actual controller. I can go down to the actual DB that was here. There's structure in this DB that came with this, this data block. I have an FB here that has SCL code. Now you can see the, the actual if then else statements here for this SCL code. And then the main OB, if I double click on that, at this point you'll see that I have the entire structure for the actual program here that I'm calling. And in fact, I even have the comments for each block so I know exactly what to do and how to do it the next time I'm working on this project. I was able to do all this in just a matter of minutes. Now that's engineering efficiency.